What is up? This is David, and welcome back to the Flow Program. In today's lesson, we are going to be talking about quantum habits. This is those small, tiny little micro actions we can take every single day that will produce an explosion of outcome on the other side. Input one, output ten. So let's get into the lesson. All right. So from yesterday's lesson, we talked about our true north, right? And the true north was all about your one thing, your one goal. That will give you direction, and it's like your compass throughout this entire program. Okay, so that you are never lost, and you always have a sense of direction to be going towards. And so yesterday was all about the what, the goal, the one thing. And so today we are going to be talking about the rest of the true north here. So the how, the where, the why, and the who. So let's start off with the how. What are the action steps that we can take to actually get ourselves to our true north? So this is the smart. Massive action plan, and it's got to be smart here because just taking massive action can really, really become scattered and not really efficient, right? So we want to be as most efficient and as effective as a, as possible. So that is why it's got to be smart. It's got to be a deliberate massive action plan instead of just a massive action plan, okay? Because we want to be saving time and we want to do it in the the way that produces the most most outcome as possible, okay? So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that goal that we that we came up with yesterday, and we're going to chunk it down. Okay, so we're gonna take that one goal and then break that down into months, and then months into weeks, and then weeks into days. So here's a little example. Okay, and this is probably going to be the main example throughout the entire program. But the example is writing a short book, right? And let's just pretend that we have a deadline of say three months. Okay, so this is how we are going to break this down. So. The monthly goal then becomes okay. Say we want to write a book with about twelve chapters. Twelve divided by three months is four. So we have four chapters a month that we want to complete. And let's also break that down into weekly. So weekly looks something like this: four chapters a month is about thirty pages, let's say. And we'll estimate that to about seven pages a week per chapter. Okay. And so then the daily action looks something like this: thirty pages a month equals seven pages a week, roughly. Okay. And then that turns out to being one page a day. So that will be our massive smart action daily list. And so let's see how we can use this on the True North calendar here. Okay, so we're going to start off with the monthly and quarterly goal. And the True North calendar is a special tool for this program, the special calendar that we will be using. And I'll leave that link in the resources section down below. And it will look something like this. So this is the the big overview of the entire year, and it's broken down into four different quarters. So what I like to do is I like to break things down into quarters, and I feel like for me, three months or a quarter is like the perfect amount of time to tackle these big projects and to really get momentum. And so so a quarter really works great for me. So but that's just me. Everybody's different. But we're going to take a look at the at the actual calendar now. So here is the actual calendar of the True North, and as you can see, it is broken down into quarters. So what you want to do is you can go to the right here, and you'll find the project key. So what you want to do, right, first of all, is to write down your main goal, right, your main thing that you want to accomplish. So in this case, it's going to be write my book. Okay. You also want to plan out some breaks or some cheat days you want to have for yourself. Okay. So what we're going to do is. Look to the left side of that project, and you will find a color. So in this case, it is green. So we want to schedule out the deadline or the schedule that we want to be working on our book for. So in this case, it was three months, right? So ultimately, you want to highlight all of these, and then you want to mark them as green. Okay, and ideally, you want to you want to color these in too. But for the sake of this example, we'll just say for three months we're going to be working on this book. And we can also schedule in some breaks and some cheat days. So say like uh, this week you want to take a break, right? So you can just mark that out and schedule that in as well. And let's just do it right here too. And as you can see, the color for this is right here. It's light blue, so you can color that in yourself. So you get a big visual representation of what your schedule can look like. Okay. So this is the big monthly and quarterly and yearly view of the True North calendar. So it's pretty easy to use and pretty self-explanatory. All right. So for the monthly and quarterly view, you start out with the quarterly view or the yearly view, however way you want to structure it, and you just block out time for your one thing, your goal. You schedule that in, and then you block out time for a rest period. 
Okay, now let's take a look at the weekly structure. Let's break that monthly goal of say 30 pages a month down into weeks now and let's get down into the details. There are two ways on how we can go about this. First is the good old fashioned pen and paper way where you can just use a notebook and just write this down and structure your, your weeks like this. Or you can use an online tool called Trello and Trello is free and I'll also, also leave a link to that down below. So let's take a look at the pen and paper way first. Okay, so the pen and paper method looks something like this. So I have broken this down into different weeks, right? Into a weekly structure. And within that weekly structure, I got uh, just a bit more detailed. So for this instance in chapter one, I, broke in, broke in it, I have broken it down into the forward, the intro, and the background. And in week two, there's a K missing there, but, but I've broken this down into the call, the venture, and refusal of the call. And so we're going to then take this weekly structure and then break it down into daily structures. But before that, let me show you the Trello view, which is the digital form of the weekly structure. All right. So here we are in Trello and you can access this by going to Trello.com. And I will also leave this specific example in the resources section down below. And so what Trello looks like is it's kind of like this. And it's very easy to see, see the entire structure in a week by week basis, which is how I like to use this. And the way Trello works is it first starts off with the board and the board is like the big project, right? So in this case, we are writing our book or you can name this whatever you want, right? So this is the board. This is the entire big project here, okay? And so to break this down into a weekly structure, what you can do is you can add a list. The list is the weekly view. So you can just say, I don't know, you can say week six for this one. And then within those lists, we have what are called cards. Okay, so this is a card, this is another, and this is another card, all right? So within here, we have like a task list or a description. But for this case, we just write down our tasks for this forward part, okay? So for in this, in this example, you can say get friend to write the forward or include note from author. So that's how this is broken down into. And so you can break your chapters down into smaller ideas by adding another card. And then those smaller ideas into a task that you want to sign on a daily basis. Okay. So now let's take this entire structure and then convert this, transfer this into our true North calendar. Okay. So I have transferred some of those Trello items onto the true North calendar here. And as you can see, it is now broken down into daily tasks, right? Now it's, it has become a, a bite-sized manageable task that we can tackle every single day. And so for this day, uh, we have, you know, get friend to write forward. We have include note from the author and then we have write character intro. But the thing is, right, you want to have your most important item on the top of the list. So the most important item here, what makes us get closer to our goal, what moves the needle forward is writing, right? All these other things are secondary. So what we're going to do, we're just going to rearrange these so that writing becomes our number one priority. Okay. And so we have broken this down into daily bite sized manageable action items that we can now get into every single day. Okay. So Trello, like I showed you, it has big boards, which is your main project. And then it's broken down into lists, which is your weekly action plan. And then your tasks, your daily action plan. And you transfer those items onto the true North calendar and you do it one week at a time. And the reason why we do it only one week at a time is because we have to calibrate for new things that might show up. Say you're writing your book, for example, and then you have another idea that you want to put in there, but then you look at your schedule and it's already packed, right? So it's got, you have to like move everything forward in order for you to fit, fit that new idea in, in there. So in order to make it easier for us and our organization and to recalibrate ourselves, we just do it one week at a time. And we can also have, you know, get a lot of things done within that week. Say we complete all our, all our daily to-do lists in like three days, for example. And so we have like the rest of the four days left. So what are we going to do there? Right? So we really want to do it one week at a time. So it gives us a lot of flexibility throughout each and every day. Okay. And whether you want to take a break on the weekends or not, that is completely up to you. For me, when I'm in this big flow momentum and when I have a big project too, I don't really like to take breaks. I at least like to do something on the weekends. I at least like to create something on the weekend. So keep that in mind. Maybe you can just knock down something small on the weekend. Okay. Okay, so let me dive down deeper into the daily structure. So for the daily structure, always put your top priority item on the top, like I showed you. And so this is all about prioritizing. And this is a big Peter Drucker concept. He is a big management guru. And he says that being efficient is about doing things right, 
okay? And being effective is doing the right things. So we want to be aiming for effectiveness, okay? So we want to put our top priority item, the one thing that makes us closer and closer to our goal on top of the list. The first thing should be the, the one thing that's truly important to us on an everyday basis. And please don't confuse the hardest thing with the most important thing. Those are very different things, all right? Something might be really challenging, but it might not make you, you know, get you closer to your goal. So you really want to organize it in an order of importance. Importance, not necessarily the hardest thing. So for example, let's take a look at the book writing example. So let's say that this is our daily task item. So we work on book design, we write emails, and then we work on our website, and then finally we do some writing. Well, a better way to prioritize this is simply to put writing on the top, right? That because that is the most important thing, and that is the thing that will get us closer to our goals. Okay, so we really want to maximize our efficiency and our effectiveness. Okay, so yeah, highest priority goes on the top. Okay, and the reason why we're doing this, why we are putting the the most important goal in in top on top of our action item list, is because willpower is like a muscle. So we have the most willpower right when we wake up, right in the morning, okay? And it's it's kind of like a battery. It's strongest in the morning and slowly starts to deplete as we go on throughout the day. And so by placing our most important item in, in closest to the morning as possible, then we are allocating most of our energy onto that item. And then after we knock out, knock out that item, then our willpower slowly starts to decrease. And say, for example, the, the example that I gave, so let's take a look back here. Say, for example, we had our task item like this. So we say, say we worked on our book and then we wrote our email and then we worked on our website and then we got to our writing. Then a lot of our willpower will have been depleted and we won't get much writing done if we do it this way. So it's better if we just flip that on its head and we inverse that. So that's why it's important to write and do the most important thing first thing in the morning. And it has to be with very intense focused action and a lot of mental energy onto that one thing, okay? So do it with some deliberate focus power. And try to aim for 100%. Whatever is on your action item list, your massive smart action item list, try to get it checked off throughout the day. So again, put, put things that are on your action item list that are not too stressful, but are also not too easy. You want it to be quite challenging for you, but you don't want to overwhelm yourself and you want to aim for 100%. And if we do it this way, we, we tend to get more and more confident and we start to believe in ourselves more when we actually have something done throughout the day. And we, when we actually have a plan and then we, we actually execute those plans every single day, we start to get a sense of accomplishment and we get that feeling of reward, right? And so it makes us feel good. And that's how we can ingrain those habits for the long term. And one thing that I forgot to mention is after you have completed these daily task items on your, your calendar here, you want to check it off. Okay. So you want to check it off right next to each other and it automatically turns green. And so it gives you that sense of accomplishment of, of that pride that, oh, yes, I have accomplished everything that I wanted to today. And now you get to relax a little bit and you get to reward yourself and and I will go over this in a little bit also, but then at the end of the day, you can also put in a little reward task here too. So say for example, after you got all of those things done, then you can, I don't know, have a dinner with friend here. So that acts as your reward after you get, after you have done all of your action item lists for the day, okay? Okay, so again, you wanna calibrate, plan out one week at a time. Your action items, sometimes they do need adjustments. I mean, I really want you to aim for 100%, and to be as close as 100% as possible, but there are some days when the task is just really, really hard. So you really have to move that task over to the next day, okay? And here's another tip for saving willpower. So again, willpower is like a muscle and we'll go deeper into willpower in the next lesson, but willpower is, it, it depletes over time. So if you are planning for the day during the morning, you are wasting that willpower, right? So what we want to do is we want to plan for tomorrow today. So at the end of the day, you want to recalibrate and reorganize the next day and then reestablish those daily task items so that you're not wasting that willpower in the morning. So that you can just wake up and then go straight towards your one thing and knock that thing down with 100% focus power and 100% willpower. 
Okay, so plan for tomorrow today. Okay, really important. Plan for tomorrow at the night of the day, not in the morning where you are wasting your willpower. Save your willpower for your one thing, for your main thing. Okay, and you want to take it one footstep at a time. Remember to create something every day. Don't take a look at the big picture and be overwhelmed by it. Just take it one footstep at a time, one day at a time. And just create something every single day. That's how we can get one step closer to our goals every single day, okay? You gotta be patient with this. Just focus on the now, just focus on the daily action items. And so this is taken from the book called Power of Habits, which is an incredible book. I'll leave a link down in the resource section below. So these, are, this is basically how habit pretty much works, right? So first we have a trigger. It's a reminder that gets us into that routine. And then we have the actual routine or the habit itself. And then we have a reward at the end of that habit. So in this case, let me show you an example. In this case, on our, on our True North calendar, this calendar can act as your actual trigger. You get, you, you open up your Google Sheets and then you get into your calendar and then you see your daily action item list. And then you get into your, and then you now get into the routine, which is the action. And so after the routine, you check it off, right? So checking it off also in, its, in and of itself acts as a reward because whenever we check off something, we can get a little hit of dopamine in our brains. Dopamine is a, a chemistry in our body that acts as a pleasure, pleasure signal to our bodies, okay? So whenever we check something off, we get a little hit, hit of dopamine for that sense of accomplishment. And we can also set a reward at the end of the day. So after we get all of this done, we get to have a little reward by you know whatever it is that you want to set your reward as. So in this case, we can say that uh, we are going to go out and have dinner with a friend. Okay, so this this can actually act as a reward. So we have the entire habit loop into this daily action items. So we have the task, we have the trigger, which is the actual calendar itself. We have the routine, the task, and then we have the reward. Okay. All right. So let's get into the habit tracker part of the True North calendar. So this actually acts as a separate tool from the main tool of the, the daily action item list. So you don't want to be confused with the main thing, okay? Keep the main thing the main thing and the daily action items that are of the highest importance because that gets you closer to your daily goals, okay? But you can use the calendar as a habit tracker. And this stems from a method that was invented by Seinfeld and he named this breaking the chain. So if you can see here, this picture, so it's, it's a calendar, right? It's a calendar filled with X's and then, and then the red marks are no X's. So what Seinfeld, and Seinfeld, he's the, the great comedian, right? He's very well known for his stand-up comedy. And what Seinfeld did was he put up a calendar on, a, on his wall to keep a track of whenever he wrote down jokes or whenever he, he wrote down a, a piece of comedy line for the day, right? And whenever he wrote a joke or he wrote a line of comedy, he would put an X next or on the day that he wrote down the piece of line. And so his main mindset was, whatever you do, Seinfeld, do not break the chain. And he can, you know, he can write like 10 jokes for one day. He can write one joke a day, but whatever, whatever happens, he has to, he has to write some kind of joke for that day. He cannot break that chain. And he said to have done this for, you know, many, many months at a time where he did not break the chain. But the, the funny thing is that people asked Seinfeld after the fact of when this habit tracker got pretty famous and Seinfeld actually said that he did not come up with this method at all and he didn't even use this method at all. But it's still, you know, it's still a good way to track your habits, okay? So the calendar, the True North calendar that we are using actually has a habit tracker built in and it's used a little differently. So instead of X's and O's, we have green and red and I'll show you how to use that habit tracker. Okay, so as you can see, these dates here for the month of January, whatever month it is, these are not just dates, but they can also act as our habit tracker, okay? So let's let's come up with a habit that we want to accomplish every single day. So you can make a habit that's, that's synonymous with your main thing. So you can make like your habit, say, writing for 20 minutes, okay? Or you can make a completely different habit. And what I like to do, I just like to write it in the notes section down here below. So I can say, do 20 minutes of writing and it goes green. Or we can say, let's do 20 minutes of meditation equals green or something like that. Whatever habit you want to establish, okay? Again, you wanna, you wanna keep this separate from your main thing. This always comes first, right? But you can also 
make you know like writing part of your daily habit as well so let's say like for today we did our 20 minutes of writing then you can go up here and mark the background as green and so you get to see whether you or not you are keeping up with your habit or not and if you miss a day you can just mark it as red okay and so you want to keep that chain going for as long as possible and that becomes our habit tracker and for this example you can make your daily habit 20 minutes of writing so what you can do is you can say that you did 20 minutes of writing but then that writing is also included in the right character intro right but then say that you haven't finished it yet so say you just did your 20 minutes of habit of writing for the day you can mark that green and then you can continue on to writing the character intro until you finish it but you have already established and done the habit for the day so you can mark that as green or what you can do is you can use it as a separate habit so you can say i want to finish 20 minutes of meditation and then in the morning after you do your meditation you can just mark that green okay and let me just give you some rules for using this habit tracker these are just simple little rules that you can use and to make this fun to make this kind of like a game right so the rules is do not break the chain and james clear the author of atomic habits he says he has come up with this rule he says you can miss one day because you know sometimes we run into emergencies and everything but just do not miss two times twice in a row okay you can miss one day if you're if you're really you know like like if you're injured or something you have to go to the hospital but just don't miss twice a day and here's another rule that i added do not miss more than four times a month okay do not miss more than four times a month total so most of that month should look very very green all right so that's how we can establish and keep our habits and make it a lifelong skill and again like i said it can cross over with your daily task so for example your main thing is writing your book and you can make your your habit writing for 20 minutes a day and then you can mark that as green and then you can continue writing until you get that one thing checked off your action item list all right but here's a little trick for the habit tracker okay we can actually trick our mind so instead of tackling a big habit like writing for 20 minutes a day or even longer than that writing for one hour every single day because that could be a big task to some people what we can do instead is we can use a little trick called the two minute rule and this also comes from the book atomic habits and you can check that out if you want more details but the two minute rule states that it's kind of like our gateway action it's the thing that will get us started with that activity it's the thing that will create that momentum for that activity so instead of trying to write for 20 minutes we instead say let's just write two sentences like on days where we really just don't feel like like writing we can just say to ourselves just write two sentences and when we say like two sentences you know it's not that big of a deal okay yeah i can do two sentences that takes like two minutes right so it keeps that habit going and it doesn't really overwhelm us like writing for an hour for example and so what is that first footstep that we can take into our habits and let me just give you an example here so this is twyla tharp and she is one of the greatest dancers and choreographers of the modern era and she credits much of her success to her small daily habits okay so what she would do in the morning what twyla tharp would do was she would start her day off with a ritual right so she would say like wake up in the morning at like 5 30 a.m and then she would put on her workout clothes and her 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 dance clothes and whatnot and then she would walk outside and she would hail a taxi and tell the taxi to go to her gym where she works out for you know several hours a day but she says that her ritual is not the stretching or the weight training that she puts her body through each morning but the ritual is the cab it's the hailing of the cab the moment i tell the driver where to go i have completed the ritual this is a great example of the two minute rule right it's that simple act but doing it the same way each morning habitualizes it makes it repeatable and easy to do it reduces the chance that i would skip it or do it differently it is one more item in my arsenal of routines and one less thing to think about so we want to come up with a simple little act our two minute action gateway action that leads us into 20 minutes of writing or 20 minutes of meditation or one hour of writing right so what is that small first footstep that gets us in that door so the ritual is a cab what is your cab and i'll give you some examples here 
So here are some examples of two minute rules. So instead of establishing a habit of one hour of yoga, you can just simply say, take out my yoga mat. Or instead of saying, go to the gym, put on my shoes and take two steps outside. And instead of writing an entire book, you can just say, write two crappy sentences a day. That would be my habit. And you can do it as simply as saying, instead of flossing my whole mouth, you can just floss one teeth. Because the hardest step is that first step, is that first step into the gym, right? It's that first teeth flossing. And what you will notice is that once you start flossing one teeth, you will get yourself to floss the entire mouth. So it's just getting yourself and making it as easy as possible to take that first step. So define one first easy step as your first two minutes to get your, get your foot in the door of establishing that habit. All right, so now we have covered the how, the action steps of our one goal, of our one thing. Now let's establish where, why, and who. Start with where, the footsteps. So this is going to be part of your action item list, but I want you to come up with a time period and a behavior and a location that you want to be doing your your activity or your one thing for. So here's a little example. So for the, the time period, I will insert a certain behavior at certain time in certain location. For the rest of the year, 2019, I will write 20 minutes a day at 9 a.m. at the Starbucks across my apartment. Okay, so this is a little example and I'm going to be leaving this in the action items after the lesson. So here's another one. So for the next 90 days, I will exercise 30 minutes a day at 9 a.m at the yoga studio. So this is establishing, again, the where and the action and the location, okay? Now let's cover the why of our true north. And this is really big because the why is the fuel. Your why is your fire. It's that thing that motivates you, inspires you to do it every single day. And you really want to ask yourself, what is my why? Why do I want this goal? Why do I want to achieve this one thing? And what will it do for me? And you want to go very, very deep. You want to attach some emotion to your why because it is the emotion that is at the core of that fire. So you want to ask yourself why three times. Okay, so say you're, for example, I don't know, let me say, okay, I'll give you an example of my online course, right? Why is this my goal? Why do I want to create an online course? And at surface level, my first why is, you know, I want to share my knowledge of, of flow, focus, and productivity of what I have accumulated throughout those years with other people. That's the surface level of my why. But then I ask myself, why again? So we go two layers deep here. So why do I want to share my knowledge of flow and focus and productivity on this? Hmm. Well, my second why becomes, I want to do some good for the world and to add some value. That is, and that becomes my second why. But let's go one more why deeper here, okay? We're going into the inception level of whys in our, in our deep one thing here. So the third why, if I ask myself why again, like why do I want to do some good for the world and to add some value? And this becomes my third why. Whenever I see the face of gratitude on someone's face for the value that they receive, it really brings me such a feeling of joy that I was able to impact a person's life in a positive way. And this really hits me at, at an emotional level. I'm, I'm actually getting a little emotional reading this right now. And, and it really ignites that fire in me and that, and that makes this goal, makes the daily actions, makes the thing that I'm doing worthwhile. And it's the inspiration that, that keeps me going. That even through the hard times, Whenever I think about this why and how I can impact a person's life and bring some feeling of joy, feeling of gratitude to somebody else, this brings me one of the greatest feelings in the world. And it really hits me at an emotional level. So you want to find out your deep why. Why do you want to achieve that one thing? And when you do this, inspiration, and motivation automatically just takes over your life. And, and that feeling of, you know, those barriers of procrastination, they no longer exist because you have a deep enough why, because you have a strong emotion associated to the action and to the end goal of what you are doing, because it gives you purpose, okay? 
So find out your true why, your deep why, and ask yourself three times deep, the inception level of your one thing. Use that emotion for your sustainable energy and to, to really keep us going. All right, so the who part. Okay, who are you doing this for? And this is actually not for you. The who part is for another person. And when you focus on someone else other than yourself, it actually sometimes gives us more motivation. We will sometimes do more for others than we will ever do for ourselves. So think about somebody who you really truly care about and do this for them. You're also doing this for yourself, of course, but you're also doing it because, because you really care about others, right? So think about somebody who you really care about and do it for them. And please put some thought into your why and your who, because this is those, again, those solid foundations for everything else to be built on. We really want to build our building correctly from the get go, or else we will have a very flimsy building, you know, collapse. And, and we have to do it all over again, right? You don't want to build another building all over again. So we really want to establish a good goal and you can always change your goal. It's not too late to change your goal. So you can go back and you can ask yourself, is this really the goal that I want on the deepest level of me? If it's not, you can change it. Please, you want a good goal that will keep you going, that will give you that fire and ignite your mind on fire, right? And you want to really come up with a deep why and a deep who. Who are you doing this for? And so here's another concept from James Clear on, on establishing habits, right? So he has a model and he, he names this model, the outcome, the process, and the identity. And so we have covered all bases actually throughout the lesson so far. So the outcomes, these are the what, the when, the where. Our goal, our direction, our one true north, this is our outcome, right? The thing, thing that we want to get a result from, that is our main outcome. And the process was the how, the calendar. The, the daily execution lists, the footsteps, the journey, that was our process. And we also established our why, the fuel, the sustainable long-term energy. Now, what about identity, right? What about ourselves? Because the who is, is we were doing it for somebody else. That was more of a selfless type of goal. But this is more of a personal goal, like more of our personal identity. And if you do something for long enough, that habit Will no longer just be a habit it will become a natural instinct and a natural part of you it is when doing becomes being it is when it becomes so automatic your subconscious mind takes over and you no longer have to think about it it automatically becomes a flow state in and of itself okay so that is the identity and the goal the outcome that's great and all the actions that we are taking but ultimately it is who we become that is the ultimate prize, that is the ultimate goal. The hero, the heroine that we create, the character we become, that is the ultimate reward. And that is something that we can sustain for the rest of our lives because a goal, we can always replace those, right? But who we become, that has permanence in it. And that becomes the true value. And it becomes our true essence of who we really are. So the goal is not the goal. The goal is merely a bonus. It's merely a byproduct of who we become. Because the ultimate gift is being and becoming our greatest version of ourself. And if we have somebody who, well, I mean, if, if we become somebody who is true to ourselves, you know, if we become that best version of ourselves, we can grab any goal we can always get to our true north. And although our true north is definitely important, we have a purpose in our life. We have a direction that we want to strive towards. But who is that person that's that's walking there? Right? It's you. So that is the most important part, being and the, and the becoming. It's your true essence, the realest, truest, best version of yourself. That is the ultimate gift. And that is what we're trying to strive forward and strive to become throughout this lesson and ultimately throughout this course, okay? After the six weeks, you can become or you can be on your way to becoming your best version of yourself. So here are your action items for today, the fun part, right? All right, so first and foremost, 
is continue fasting. So that's an action item from yesterday. And we're going to, again, establish those fasting muscles. A big part of the program is, is establishing a good biology and to get ourselves into a state of ketosis, which is very, which is a state which is very, um, I would say it gives you a, a great sense of energy, especially mental clarity when you are in a state of ketosis. And one way we can get into the state of ketosis is through fasting. So we want to become better and better at fasting. So all you have to do is continue to skip breakfast, okay? So continue fasting. And the second action item. Second action item is breaking down one thing into daily actions and start, it, start to use your True North calendar and habit tracker. So that entire lesson was all about starting to use our True North calendar and our habit tracker. So you can re-watch this lesson and, and follow along in the lessons that, or the lesson that we have covered today. So the third one, make an appointment with yourself. Okay, so what is this, right? So let's take a look, closer look at this. Okay, so make an appointment your, with yourself. Okay, so this is action item number three and number two. And so the mindset that I want you to establish is, will you miss an appointment with somebody important? Say, for example, like, I don't know, Elon Musk or Bill Gates or somebody you admire as your role model came up to you and said, hey, hey, David, why don't we get together for lunch next week at 9 a.m.? And, you know, this is like your big big hero your big role model you're not going to say no and you are definitely going to make that appointment in fact you are going to show up early for that appointment to make sure you get there on time right and so we want to adopt this mindset with somebody who is even more important than our role models who is even more important than bill gates than uh, tony robbins or oprah and that person is yourself so we will not miss an appointment when meeting with an important person such as these people. But the more important person is ourselves, right? So we do not miss, we do not want to miss an appointment with the most important person in our lives, which is ourselves. So that is what we are doing with this activity. We are going to set out an appointment with ourselves. We are going to use this on our daily calendar. So this is separate from the True North calendar, which is just work only related. And we're actually going to use our personal calendars for this. So you can use a Google calendar or you can use an Apple calendar, whatever calendar is that is that you are using on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're going to create an appointment with ourselves. We cannot miss this appointment. Remember, establish the mindset that you are meeting with somebody really, really important. And you must not miss this appointment. So what you can do is Simply go into your calendar and say you have a writing appointment or whatever whatever task that it is that you are doing, whatever your one thing is, and you want to set it every single day at a certain time, at the same time. And so this plays two ways, right? So it, it creates a mentality in your mind that you have an appointment, so you cannot miss that for the world. And the second thing that it does is say, for example, you meet up with a friend and they want to catch up and they ask you, hey, what are you doing? you know, next week at 9 a.m. on Tuesday. And and so you can show them your actual calendar and say, oh, I can't meet you at that time because I have an appointment. And so this this way, you won't make any excuses saying, oh, oh yeah, I have, my day is free, even though it's not, even though you want to, you know, work on your one thing, right? So you can use this calendar as a way to show other people that you are busy at that time. And because you are, right? You don't want to miss an appointment. Again, you don't want to miss an appointment with an important person. So you want to schedule this in as a factor of just getting that mentality of I'm not going to miss this appointment and also as a social factor. You can show other people that, no, I, I don't have time at this time of day because I have an appointment. Okay, so that is the appointment with yourself. Okay, action item number four. I don't know why I named it number three, but action item number four is to print and fill out the following items. So yesterday we filled out our true north promise, right? And there are a few more things that we wanna print out. We want to really, really tackle this one thing and to really achieve our goals from as many angles as possible. Okay, let's actually get results. Let's actually do this once and for all, okay? So we're going to print and fill this out one more time. So the first is action and who. Second is the deep why. And the three is a core essence. And these are, you really want to bring these at an emotional level. So you really want to think about this from an, an emotional standpoint. So this is the action and who. And I'll give you an example of what this looks like. 
you want to fill this out and you want to sign and print and date it. So this is this example. So for the this time period, I will insert behavior at insert time in insert location. Okay, so for example, for the rest of the year, 2019, I will write 20 minutes a day at 9 a.m. at Starbucks across my apartment. So you want to fill this out for the top section here of the action, the action part of this, this printout here, okay? And the who part, who are you doing this for? So write down someone or some people who you really care about. And, it, and please don't write yourself for this one. And so really think about who are you doing this for? And you can be really, really creative about this. I remember when I first wrote down, like, who am I doing this for? I also said, you know, like family and friends and the people who I, who I want to inspire in my life, right? But I also thought, okay, I also want to give this information out to my future family, meaning, you know, like maybe like my son or to my daughter. And I really want to do this for them too. So you can get really creative with who you really care about. I mean, it can be your family, it can be your significant other, it can be your friends, it can be your fans, or it can even be your future fans. Like say you have no fans right now, but for your future fans, you really want to do this for them. You really want to inspire them. So write some somebody or some people down that you really, really care about. And the next one is the deep why. So you want to fill out your deep why. And again, you want to go three layers deep, the inception of why. Why do you want to achieve this goal? Make it intensely emotional and positive. Really, really think about this. Really think about your deep why and get emotional. That becomes your fire. Next one is the core essence. This is your identity. This is who you are at that core, that truest person. Okay, what kind of person do you have to be in order for this goal to be magnetized to you? So imagine yourself 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the line. What kind of person do you want to become? What kind of person do you have to be for you to achieve this goal? So this is like the long term game here. This is looking at things way beyond just six weeks. Who do you want to become? Who is that best version of yourself? Who do you see yourself in, in those 10, 20 years? Right? Who's that greatest version of yourself? So I want you to write it down in this way, okay? So we're gonna split this into two parts. First is the I am. This is the being. I am this type of person. This is establishing my identity. So here are some examples. I am a writer who writes poetry every single day. I am a giver of energy and inspiration. I am a person who inspires others to do what inspires them. That's from Simon Sinek, by the way. I am living in perfect health and well-being every single day. So establish some kind of identity using the words I am. And so the thing about I am is because life is always a process, right? What happens when you become this person? What comes after that? Because after you achieve your goal, and I'm pretty sure there is another goal that you want to set because, because you always want to be having a, a purpose in your life, okay? a, a, a sense of direction that you always want to be striving towards. So the next part is about becoming about becoming and it's stated in the third person here so we want to do this both in the first person and also in the third person okay because we want to establish our identity from many different angles okay again and some of us resonate more from a first person angle and some of us resonate more from a third person perspective so here are some examples for the next part so you can say david is and you can say like david writes one page of his book every single day David gets healthier and healthier every single day. David gets better at writing every single day. David gives and shares more of his information on productivity and on flow every single day. So write something that you can do every single day. And it's, it's a ongoing process. It's a never ending process. And this concept, or let me go over this first. So make sure that it's stated in the present moment or as an ongoing action, make sure it's positive, and emotionally charged words and be specific but also concise and so okay so the first person right that's about a static goal that's about being but we also want to establish a third person a transient goal it's about the becoming and the becoming part it's all about the the never-ending improvement this is a concept known as kaizen it's a japanese concept that's used in the car manufacturing world and tony robbins calls this kanai right the constant and never-ending improvement 
because we always want to be having a purpose in our lives and a continual purpose that never ends because if we are not growing we are dying we don't want to be dying so we always want to be growing that is why we establish both the being and also the becoming something that never ends so that is all about your core essence so let's both enjoy the journey and the destination and the process of life how i see it is it's a constant constantly unfolding and it's a dance between the becoming and the being we're weaving through the multiple dimensions of life and that, i think that's what makes it beautiful <laughs> we always become we always achieve and then there's also the becoming that never-ending process of us so print and fill those out and sign it and hang it up somewhere visible okay you want to see this every day yeah you want to see this every day so somewhere visible where you pass by every single day so action item number five okay visualize this is all about visualization and i know that this may sound like spiritual or woo -woo, but it's it's pretty scientific actually <laughs> because we are influencing our subconscious and our unconscious mind so that we you know we align ourselves in coherence to our one thing our one goal so what, how we can influence our subconscious mind is we can do that we can visualize once right when we wake up and once again right before going to bed and right when we wake up and right before going to bed is the doorway to our subconscious okay our subconscious is a thousand times stronger than our conscious mind if we can influence our subconscious mind then it'll, it'll be a lot easier to get to our goal and right when we wake up or right before we get to bed we are in a level of consciousness known as alpha or theta wave states. And this is that relaxed state where our body gets into and our subconscious mind is highly susceptible at this frequency rate. And so it is our doorway to the subconscious. Instead of just like visualizing and repeating to ourselves, you know, just, just, through, just through sheer repetitiveness, and being completely inefficient, we can become more efficient and effective by visualizing when our subconscious mind is wide open. And we can do that right when we wake up and right before going to bed. And so this is how you want to visualize though, okay? You want to convince yourself that you have established this goal. You want to do it with resolution and with complete gratitude. See yourself as having and of having become the person who attracts this goal and really convince yourself that it has already happened in the present moment. Really give thanks to it. Say, thank you so much for, for giving me this book that I have written and now that I can share with the entire world and really get your feeling of gratitude going there because it's the feeling that counts, okay? Subconscious mind speaks in feelings and emotions, not logic, it does not speak in logic. It speaks in feelings. That's how you can get it down there, right? So you really need to feel. And that's why we have all the other other emotional parts and components of the deep, or I mean the true north too, because, you know, like deep why and who we're doing this for, because it creates that feeling within us so that we can really soak that into the subconscious. And so you have to do it with conviction and resolution. So say, for example, say that there is a package that's at your doorstep, a package arrived at your doorstep. How do you go out to get that package? Well, it's like, of course, you just open the door and you go out to your door and you pick up the package, right? That's kind of how you want to see yourself with this goal. You want to make it as an of course mentality. So see yourself with the goal and it, and it came in a package at the doorstep. Now, all you got to do is take those actions take those footsteps one at a time go out the door and pick up the package it becomes an of course kind of thing so you want to you want to visualize it with conviction and resolution and sometimes the goal is the problem if you can't get convinced by the by your goal then it might be that your goal is too big okay so again we want to get a goal that is not too challenging but not too easy it's right in the sweet spot of a little bit challenging it stretches ourselves but not too much Say, for example, you want to, you have a goal of, I don't know, you want to create a full length movie as a movie director, but you've never 
you've never filmed anything in your entire life, right? So that goal might be a little overwhelming. So you want to you want to make a goal that's just right outside of your your comfort levels. That way, you can have conviction that you can get it done, and it becomes that package like a doorstep. It's, it, and it now becomes, of course, I can get the school. I just gotta walk outside and pick it up. So you want to visualize it with conviction and resolution and feelings, gratitude as the most important part with that feeling. So you want to do it right when you wake up and right before you go to bed. Okay, and make this a habit. You want to visualize this right when you wake up, right before you go to bed throughout the next six weeks, and you will just see yourself getting closer and closer to the goal when you do it this way. All right. So here are your action items one more time, and. Always make sure to make it a game, make it fun. You know, make, put some lightheartedness into it. And when you do it that way, you really enjoy the process. You really enjoy the journey for the journey in itself. And of course, you can also celebrate when you get to the destination as well. And I just want to leave, off, leave you off with a quote by one of the people who I really look up to. And this is Eckhart Tolle. And he has two amazing books. One is called The Power of Now. And the other is called A New Earth. And he has this quote in one of his books. He says, being one with life is being one with now. You then realize that you don't live your life, but life lives you. Life is the dancer and you are the dance. It has so much truth in this statement. And also, it's also very poetic. And it's also a very elegant statement here. And so what this means to me is to really be creating something every single day. To not just be a consumer of things, not just being a taker, but being a really big giver. Being a giver means to, to be taking action and to let your creative ideas, to set those free, to share with, that wor- share with the world so that your ideas can flourish into other people's lives and so that it can blossom into other people's lives. So that's what that means to me. So please... Have an amazing day, (laughs) but also please complete your action items for today. And I hope you have learned a lot throughout this lesson. And and let's please try to create every day, right? Get those action items done and to become a creator, not just an observer. Become the dance, not just observe the dance. So thank you so much. I will see you in the next lesson. Until then, take care, my friend.